Attention Ward's customers, these are the final moments of this location's store closing sale. 95% off all remaining merchandise. We're sorry to leave you. Please make your way to the nearest checkout terminal. The largest retail closure at the time, Montgomery Ward ceased operations and disappeared from the retail world. How did the once triumphant catalog retailer become America's first large-scale retail tragedy? The story of this once great retailer starts in August of 1872. Aaron Montgomery Ward saw that Agricultural America had a need for a way to have goods delivered to their door. He invented the concept of the mail order catalog, starting it as a single sheet of goods. This sheet of goods would grow into a full company that published large catalogs. These catalogs grew to over 500 pages of goods, from farming supplies and home improvement to whole homes and clothing. If you could name it, a Montgomery Ward catalog would have it. Montgomery Ward was also the first company to have a satisfaction guarantee before the company was faced with strong competition from a newer mail order catalog, Sears, Roebuck and Company. In 1926, the first brick and mortar Montgomery Ward retail store opened in Plymouth, Indiana. The company expanded rapidly and in four years grew to 556 stores nationwide. However, sales started to decline as America entered the Great Depression in 1929. Sewell Avery came to help the company out of a spiral of mounting losses and had some success doing so. He would have the U.S. government, as well as worker unions, against him. Both groups staged interventions against Avery, and Franklin Roosevelt would cease operations within Montgomery Ward on December 27, 1944. This seizure was due to Avery refusing to comply with terms of three bargaining agreements with the United Retail, Wholesale, and Department Stores Union. In the 1950s, Montgomery Ward started to fall behind in expanding retail operations. The company was hoarding cash in fear of a national economic downfall similar to the Great Depression. As a result of the cash hoarding, Wards would not act fast to expand operations into buildings that would become a shining symbol of Americana, the shopping mall. Wards' greatest competitor, Sears, would expand rapidly, moving into mall locations. Mall locations were prime real estate for retail companies, as American shoppers would have rather shopped at an enclosed shopping center with a multitude of stores in one central location, rather than shopping downtown. By the time Montgomery Ward caught up to the trend of having a mall location, a large amount of the most profitable locations were already populated by competition. Going into the 1960s, after already losing prime retail locations to Sears, Montgomery Ward would be faced with even more competition. Discount stores such as Target, Walmart, and Kmart attracted middle-class shoppers, the largest economic demographic in the country. Originally, that middle-class demographic was what Montgomery Ward intended to serve. Discount stores were able to sell similar products at cheaper prices than traditional big-box stores, which drove middle-class shoppers away from Montgomery Ward. Losses began to mount over the years once more as Montgomery Ward would lose relevance in the public eye. They'd failed to successfully rebrand themselves and also failed to renovate outdated storefronts. In 1997, Wards would enter their first round of Chapter 11 bankruptcy. As a result, they shed a debt and attempted to rebrand again, borrowing money from their parent company, GE Capital, a subsidiary of General Electric, to do so. The tagline, Things Are Changing at Montgomery Ward, was the company's slogan before, during, and after the rebrand attempt. The rebrand would come too late, and on December 28, 2000, Montgomery Ward announced that they would cease all retail operations and enter a second round of Chapter 11 bankruptcy. In 2001, all remaining Ward stores were closed, marking the end of a 128-year era.
The full-scale closure of wards was tragic for malls in smaller suburban areas. These malls, known in the business world as Class C malls, relied on anchor stores like wards to drive foot traffic into the mall. Without Montgomery Ward, these malls couldn't attract enough customers to remain truly economically viable. The mall's rewards was more common were also located in less affluent towns that normally didn't attract tourists and couldn't be supported by the smaller surrounding communities themselves. These malls were built in these smaller suburban areas for a variety of different reasons, namely to either attempt to attract tourism or to respond to an original skyrocketing population in the surrounding area. As a result, these malls would struggle to fill the empty retail space and see decreases in sales. Once a Class C mall loses an anchor, there's soon to follow closures of interior mall tenants. These closures normally continue to increase due to the poor sales within the mall, and eventually the mall has led to its demise. Once the mall closes entirely, the town in which it operated in is left without a major source of tax revenue and a building that is either immediately demolished or abandoned and left to rot.